Hi, I'm Norm Abram, and this is the New Yankee Workshop, where today we're going to build this hutch, an indispensable item in the old colonial kitchens, as we found out in a recent visit to Old Sturbridge Village. That's next, right here on the New Yankee Workshop. The New Yankee Workshop features the craftsmanship of Norm Abram. Well, here we are at the kitchen of the Fitch House at Old Sturbridge Village. And what are we preparing here? Applesauce. Mmm, and it smells good. Now on the other side of this ironing table is the piece I want you to see. It's a cupboard. I've been reminded not to call it a hutch. Back in those days, a hutch meant a rabbit's house. But it's beautifully made from wide pine boards. And down below, note there are no drawers, just a door. And the area behind was probably used to, st to store foodstuffs or cooking utensils. But up above, the open area, the display area for the plates. Look over here. They've carved a groove in the shelf to keep the plates from sliding off. And up at the top, an intricately cut valance. I think there's a lot we can learn from a piece like this. Well, now here's our version of that indispensable piece of early American furniture, the hutch. It's really nothing more than a modified chest of drawers with the addition of some raised panel doors down below. And up above, we have this fixed shelf section with a nice crown molding detail to cap it off. Now, one thing you might notice is that I've built this piece with what we commonly call number two pine. It has knots, and I think it'll look really nice when it's finished. And the good news is, is that the number two pine is about one-third the price of nice clear pine. Now, the first thing we're going to build is this base cabinet. And let's take a look at it. There's a bottom shelf, an intermediate shelf, and then these drawers are held in place by a frame that they ride on. Now, let's take a look underneath. Now, the sides and the top are held together by yet another frame. And the first thing I want to do is build these two frames. Here are the pieces I need to make the top frame. And I'm going to join the pieces together using this tongue and groove joint. I want to do the groove first in the long pieces, and I've set up the table saw with a dado head cutter. And that's really nothing more than two blades set at an angle to one another to plow out varying width grooves. That takes care of the grooves. Now I'm ready for the tongue. I've made a couple adjustments. I've widened the width of the dado cutter, and I've added this guide block which precisely locates the length of the tongues. The frame that the drawers ride on is built exactly like the top frame. It's put together with the tongue and groove joints, and I've added two more pieces in the middle for the drawers to ride on. All the joints will be assembled using yellow carpenter's glue. Okay, with it set in place, I'll secure it with a little brad. Before the glue sets up, I'm going to check the frame for square. And when the two diagonal measurements are equal, I know I'm all set. Now, I don't have to clamp these because the brads will hold them in place. Now, the draw, if you notice, as you pull it out, it doesn't tip down. And that's because I've added a little cleat underneath here, and that's fastened to the same frame. And here they are. There's three of them. And they get secured in place with some wood screws. The sides of the hutch have been made from two boards which have been glued together. After all, we can't buy 16 and a half inch boards anymore. And there's a nice fancy cutout down here at the bottom. Now, if you look down the other end of the cabinet on the inside, you'll see that I've dadoed the sides to support the shelves in those frames we've been working on. Now here's the pieces with the layout lines for the dados. And I'll take them over to the table saw, which has the dado head set up at the right width and depth. Well, 
Well, that takes care of the dados for our bottom shelf, the middle shelf, and for the draw frame. But for the top frame, I need a rabbit joint because the frame will sit flush with the top of the side panel. Let's take a look behind our hutch. The base cabinet has a plywood backing, quarter inch plywood, which is recessed in a rabbet made in the side panel. With the dado head still in, I've just readjusted the fence to make this rabbet. Well, there's no better time than now to cut out this decorative detail in the side panel. Well, now it's just a matter of assembling the various parts. A little bit of yellow carpenter's glue. And the first thing I'm going to put in is this bottom shelf. And it's just 3 quarter inch plywood. And I'll hold the shelf in place by toenailing some four penny finish nails in from the bottom. And now the middle shelf, which is just another piece of three quarter inch plywood. And now the drawer frame. With this assembly sitting on the floor, which will make it easier to put this other side on. I've had to put all the glue in the th all three dados because I have to do all three shelves at one time. So I'll carefully slip it together and nail it up. The top frame is held in place with some glue and some five penny box nails. And I can use the box nails here because they won't show when it's all finished. more glue and now the back is ready to go on. This quarter inch plywood, I'll just set it down and put a couple nails along the top edge. Okay, now by checking the diagonals, we'll see if it's square. That looks pretty good. So now I'll just nail this corner and then I can finish by nailing about every six inches along the perimeter and the intermediate frames and shelf. The face frame is a very important element in this design. The vertical members help support the cabinet. They also give us a place to hang the doors. And the combination of horizontal and vertical give us our drawer openings. Now all the joints are what we call half lap joints. And I'll show you a little sample over here. Simply half the material is removed and they just lap over one another. And I've moved my dado head from the table saw to the radial arm to do that job. Well, that should take care of the half laps. Let's see how this one fits on. That's good. Now, of course, I'm going to glue these joints together, and I'm going to fasten them with these little half-inch screws. I'm going to have to do that from the back side. But before I can drive any screws, I'm going to have to drill a counterbore so that I don't take a chance of splitting any of the pieces of wood. Well, that takes care of the face frame. But before I can put it on the cabinet, I want to cover up the edge of this plywood shelf with this piece of pine. And I'll just glue and nail that in place. Now the face frame can go on with some glue and finish nails. Now in order to prevent the drawers from wandering from side to side as they go in, I've added some cleats between the drawers and on the end. And I just fasten those in place with some drywall screws. Well, here's my top, a couple boards that I glued up and let set overnight. And the first thing that I'm going to do is scrape off this excess glue and sand it down. I'm 
Now I need to rip the top to width, and that'll be 18 and a quarter. Well, now I have to square up and cut the top to length. And to do that, I'm going to use this big homemade T-square, which just rides in the guide of the saw. And the first thing I'm going to do is square up one end. Okay, now I'm ready to cut it to length. And I want it to be 55 and a half inches long. The best way to fasten the top is just to use a few drywall screws. Well, the next thing I want to do is put this nice detail along the top. And to do that, I'm going to use this quarter-inch Roman OG bit. Not Roman OG, Roman OG. And I've put it in the router, and because I'm taking off so much wood, I'm going to do it in two passes, and I'm all ready for the first. with it adjusted to the final depth, I'll make the second pass. Well, I think that's enough for today. Tomorrow, we'll build the top unit, put on this crown molding, and build these drawers and the raised panel door. Well, I got started this morning by milling up some of the pieces for the top of our hutch. And this is one of the side pieces, and it's been dadoed at the top for the top piece. And then there's two more dados for the shelves. And also, there's a rabbit on the back of the sides, and that's to put the beadboard in, which will be the backing for the cabinet. And that's something that I picked up at the local lumber yard. It's tongued and grooved, and it has this bead in the middle. It's like the old wainscoting that you see in a lot of old buildings. Now, there's one more thing I have to do before I can assemble the case, and that's put this groove right here. And that's so we can set some plates up there so they won't slip off. Now, I've clamped a piece of one of the shelves in the bench vise, and I'm going to route it out using a quarter-inch veining bit set up in my router. Okay, that takes care of the assembly of the sides and the shelves. They're put together with some glue and nails. And the next thing I want to do is build this face frame. And this was built just like the one I made for the bottom of the hutch. Here's the top piece, which has been half lapped. And here's the side piece. And those fit over like this. And they'll be glued and fastened together with some screws. Next, let's make this molding that runs along the sides and the back of the cabinet. And I'm going to use the same cutter that I used to make this edge on the top. I've got it set up in my router table, and it's ready to go. With the upper part of my hutch set upside down on the floor, I'm ready to fit this piece of molding right here. I have a short piece which is mitered on each end. And I just turn that around and butt the mitered end up against the face frame, and then mark the length on this edge. And I'll just turn it around, end for end, and butt it against this fa face frame, giving me the length of the other piece. I'll cut these over here on my miter box, which is already set at a 90 degree angle. Where the sides meet this back molding, I like to fasten it together with some screws. 
no one will see the screws and it's a much stronger joint. So this hutch is so heavy that you'd never want to build it as just one solid piece. So I've put a few dowels along the bottom of the top piece and that'll align it with the base yet make it removable and still secure. These marks will precisely locate where I have to drill my holes in the base. And the beadboard just gets fastened with a few more drywall screws. Okay, let's turn our attention to this molding detail. It looks complicated, but it's really not that bad. The first thing I want to do is make this one by three band. And I've got one underway over at the workbench. Now the corners are put together with some little glue blocks and screws. And what this does is just helps to reinforce the joint. Now you'll also notice that I've held these little blocks up about a quarter of an inch as well as this center block. And that's so that when I put this assembly on the top frame, it'll lap down onto the face frame a quarter of an inch. And this assembly is held in place with a couple screws. Next I'll put a line on that band about three quarters of an inch down from the top edge. Next I want to make this little backer block right here which is beveled at 40 degrees to match this molding. Now these pieces get glued and screwed just below that line I put on. Cutting crown molding is definitely a challenge. What I like to do is simulate what's happening in the field back here in my miter box. So the back fence would relate to this piece and the table of the miter box would be this piece right here. Also I've added another piece of wood in this position which holds the molding in the right place so it won't slide out. And that's clamped right to the table of the miter box. So to cut a piece of molding, I just slide it into place, and I'll make all my miters and fits and be ready to nail it up. Hey, a little bit of glue on the corner joint of the molding. And before I put that up there, you can see how important this bevel strip is because that's what I use to fasten all the moldings. The molding by itself is pretty rigid, but a careless person handling it might cause some damage. So I'm just going to put these little glue blocks in to reinforce it. All right, that looks pretty good. Now I'm ready to turn my attention to the drawers and doors. I'll make the doors first, and I want to make a raised panel door. And over here on the workbench, I'll show you the different elements. There's two styles and a top and bottom rail. And then there's two pieces of wood that have been glued up about 13 inches wide, forming a raised panel. Now the styles and rails will be grooved, and they'll help secure the panel in place. The rails are grooved all the way across, but the styles, I have to stop them a little bit short of the end because I don't want that groove to show through at the top edge. And I'll do that right here on the router table. I've put a couple indicator marks on so I know where to drop the piece on and to take it out. Watch. I'll make my raised panel right here at the radial arm. There's a molding head in here with three cutters installed in it, which cut the profile of a raised panel, and it sure makes the job easy. Well, I have a really neat way for putting these door frames together. No fancy joinery here, just butt joints, a little bit of glue, a blind screw pocket, and one little screw in each corner. 
Now the blind screw pocket is made with this little jig that I bought at the store and what it does is it directs the drill at a 15 degree angle and I have a piece of tape here to tell me where to stop. Well now it's just a matter of rounding over all four edges of the door with a 3 8 rounding over bit. The doors also have a rabbet on the back side on all four edges and that's so that they'll just overlay the face frame. And I'll do that over here on the router table which is set up with a 3 8 inch rabbiting bit. Well, that does it for the doors. Now let's start working on those drawers. So the first thing I want to do is work on the draw front. And that's been rabbited on the back side on all four edges. And I'll do that over on the router table with exactly the same setup I just used on the doors. But what I have here is a dovetailing jig. And this, combined with my router, allows me to make dovetail joints like this. A perfect choice for draw fronts. Now what I've done is mounted one of my rabbited draw fronts in the top and one of the sides right here. And following the instructions, I should be able to get a perfect dovetail joint every time. Now the back of the drawer is joined to the side by a dado joint. And I'll do that over here on the table saw where it's all set up and ready to go. This groove right here in the side of the drawer will receive the plywood bottom. And I make that groove over here on the table saw with the dado head set up. The draw front also needs a dado, which must align with the one in the side piece. And I've made an adjustment to the fence for that. The draw front is rounded over and has a little lip on the edge. And I'll do that with the router table and a quarter inch rounding over bit. Well, let's assemble the drawer. Well, we're all set except for the hardware and the finish. Let's put the finish on first. Well, it takes a little bit of extra time, but the first thing that I like to do whenever I start finishing any of these projects is to put a coat of sealer even on the areas that I'm not going to see when it's all finished. It protects the wood from absorbing too much moisture, and it makes it easier to keep it clean. For my hutch, I wanted sort of a pickled look, and that allows the grain and the knots to show through. The first thing I did was try some white stain, and that really didn't give me the color I wanted. It's too light. So over here, I used a white alkyd paint, and I just put it on with a brush, let it set a little bit, and then I'll wipe some of it off with a rag. 
Well, now after about 15 minutes, with a rag dampened with a little bit of mineral spirits, I can take off as much or as little as I want. Well, now that that thin coat of white has dried, I'm ready for a coat of clear sealer. And that sort of gives it a little bit of a green color, a pickled look, which is exactly what I want. Well, two coats of a satin finish urethane with a light sanding between each coat, and this piece is ready for any abuse that it might endure. Well, you know, I think this project turned out pretty well, and I'm sure it'll get many years of good use. I hope that with the help of this videotape and the measured drawing, that you'll be able to build one of these too. Now here are some of the other new Yankee projects that you can build right in your own home workshop. Here's a workbench, a useful item in any shop. This is a drop leaf table, a classic addition to any home. Here is a blanket chest, a wonderful heirloom piece to build and have. The bedside table is shaker inspired and a popular piece. Take a look at the bathroom vanity. Its design draws on the dry sinks of the past. This handsome trestle table is patterned after one found on the island of Nantucket. The bookcase, a revival of an old beauty found at Sturbridge Village. The chest of drawers is a traditional piece based on a shaker design. Look at the candle stand with its beautifully turned center column and gently curving legs. Here is a hutch, an indispensable item in any kitchen or dining room. My writing desk is made of maple with a smooth writing surface and lots of useful storage compartments. The corner cupboard makes good use of those often unused areas in your home. Here's a medicine cabinet made from oak and featuring box joints. And there it is, the new Yankee collection. Norm Abram is the author of the book, The New Yankee Workshop, which is available in bookstores and libraries nationwide.